Shalom, giving all praise to Yahweh Shai Bashim Al Shai Bashim Raka And Shalom to the 144,000 and the rest of the elect out there. Shalom. Anyway, I'm going to entitle this video, possibly be a short video, see where the spirit takes me. Let's see, I may do multiple videos today. Let's see where the spirit takes me. Anyway, uh, I'm going, to, I'm going to entitle this video, For All They That Take the sword shall perish with the sword. And that's talking about a sword that you pull out of your sheath, a nine, an AK, an M16, a rocket launcher, a uh, ICBM missile. Those are all swords. So the modern day sword is are, are the uh, missiles. The Most High, in Isaiah 34, and I always quote this, he says, I, might, I will bathe my sword in heaven, and it shall come down upon Idumia. So the blessing that Edom received was the sword. That's, that was his only blessing. He got the fat, fatness of the land by taking it. So he's doing what he's supposed to do. He's doing what he's supposed to do. He said, here's your blessing. You want to get blessed? You got to use force to get your blessing. You got to take it and go back to, uh, as a matter of fact, you know what? Let me just go to that. Let me just go to that there and read it. And the reason why I'm going into this, I was putting some precepts together. I didn't put all of them together, but I said, I'm not going to quote a whole bunch of precepts. But there's precepts coming to my mind. Anyway, this is uh, new as of eight hours ago, 10 hours ago. The Hebrew defense unit is some agent-ish put up by a GM, the Sentinel. One of the Sentinels, the, the, um, Manatazak Bar is one of the Sentinels of Israel at GMS. You have sentinels out there. They look for things and they do videos on it. A lot of you guys don't even know. I didn't even know. Two weeks later, I didn't even know about that. What's this? What's all of this all about? Because you're sleepy, man. You're sleeping. Loving is slumber. Hey, the scripture said loving. You don't do no work. You, you're sleeping. Yeah, but I walk walk around. I wait. Yeah, but you're, you're sleepwalking. Like I said, we're going to get rid of you guys that ain't doing nothing, man. You, you guys, it ain't towing the line, the spiritual line. It says, so it says, uh, the Hebrew defense unit is some agent-ish. Yeah, first thing that came to my, my head. Now, he did a video. The first video that I saw was put up by um, the elder um, and head of uh, GMS Chicago, <clears throat> a Malcolm, a, a elder Malcolm put it up. So I saw the uh, thumbnail for this one, or maybe I got it, whatever. So I clicked on this, so I listened to some of, the, some of that, the one that Mal Elder Malcolm put up. Then I came to this, to this one, and it said the same thing. They showed the, like if you go to the beginning of this, okay, I'm 314 in, right? I come back here. So this is it right here. You blow it up. You see the lion and the shield, and then you got the, the long rifles look like to be Malishnikovs, Malish and then you got the swords, the Hebrew defense unit. And when you read their, uh, their manifesto, the Mantan manifesto, um, let me come over here, just kind of breezing through it. <clears throat> and basically, <clears throat> You know what? You had this <clears throat> back during the time of <clears throat> They were known as the uh, Zealots. And out of the Zealots came Sakari. <clears throat> and they picked up arms. And um, matter of fact, some of the uh, disciples of the Lord were uh, Zealots. Um, uh, Judas Iscariot was a zealot. 
Then there was another, he had more than one zillot, but the famous zillot, and by the by the way, the word zillot means, uh, it means, you know, jealous, meaning you you jealous for your land, your people, and you're going to fight the Roman Empire. Remember, you had a lot of different nations that got armies together to, uh, to take down the Roman army. You had a group of uh, gladiators that were slaves that got together and led by uh, a man named Spartacus. Now that's a true story. He was a Jake and they went, they, they, they were all war, they were all you know gladiators so they knew how to fight. So they said they're gonna take down the Roman empire. There's a movie on it. But at the end of the day, they failed and um, there's a movie on it where they said, you know, they were going to arrest uh, Spartacus. So he said, who's Spartacus? Everybody started standing up. I'm Spartacus. I'm Spartacus. I'm Spartacus. Now, I don't know if that actually happened or that's in the movie. You know, that's uh, called Creative License. I don't know. You got to go into the history. I mean, it's worth a Google. But anyway, they had amassed a great army of gladiators, but they couldn't defeat the Roman armies. Why? The main reason is because the Roman armies were fulfilling prophecy, just like this, the B system today. The, the, the number one system out, out here is the B system, the NATO and the EU, which the NATO includes the U.S. and you know, Canada. That's the current Roman Empire, which is now known as the New World Order or the uh, or NATO and the EU, the power structure. They're in power, and they started off small. See, the U.S., America started off small. Remember, when you go to Daniel 7, it speaks about the little horn having eyes. It started off small. It started off as 13 colonies of the uh, the, uh, the, 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 UK, the UK, the United Kingdom, the, uh, Great Britain. And it broke off from the Great Britain. Then they went, they went out west. There's a saying, go west, young man, because there was opportunity out there, out there, in the extreme west, you had a gold rush, mainly in California and other parts of this uh, this country. But they, hey, the reason why Columbus came over here is what? To fulfill prophecy. So they're in their power seat. Only he who now let will let until he be taken out of the way. So who's go, who, who put this man in the power the most high? Who's going to take this man out of, uh, out of power the most high? How about you, Meow Shai? So when you guys, when you set up a group saying we're going to come against them and we don't have a military force, you're going to lose. That's in Acts uh, chapter 5. It's going to come to not. Like I said, I'm not going to make this long. But uh, so let me just read this part here. This is at, at the end of this manifesto of the uh, HDU. We're not affiliated with them at all. We don't even know them. <laughs> You know, you would think maybe they maybe they came up with it last night. We don't know who they are, where they're located. But you know, our spidey senses go up. There's a lot of a lot of uh infiltrators in the very in all your camp. There's believe me, there's the guys that you're cool with, that you that you chop it up with, and most likely is a spy, an agent, FBI, local police. And that always happened, man. Yeah, I was uh, listening to uh, Judge Joe Brown. He had did an interview with, uh, what's that What's that devil, that black devil? Can't think of his name, but he has a YouTube page called The Fallen State. Can't think of his name. And he normally downs Jake, you know. Hey, but uh, Judge Joe Brown got him. He was smiling. He was like, listen, he pretty much let Judge Joe Brown. Hey, Judge Bro Joe Brown knows a lot. He knows he knows he's he's a real one, you know. And um, you know, he was going into a lot of stuff. So, you know, watch stuff like that. But he was going into a lot of things. So anyway, back and back back on track. So it says the H O the H D the H D U seeks to bring he Hebrews out of their lands of captivity. Well, that goes clearly against the scriptures because who's gonna bring us out of the lands? The most the how Yahweh Shai and the angels. So they're they're um 
upset in prophecy. See, if all Israelites said, we're going to leave these various lands, especially America, and we're going to go back to the Middle East, you're, that's not a fulfillment of prophecy, and it's not going to work. It has to read Ezekiel chapter 37. Read the whole chapter, one of my favorite prophetic, prophetic chapters, because it covers in a nutshell us being in America, the valley is America, um, us going out there on the highways and the byways, carrying the sign, because, because Ezekiel never carried no sign, the apostles never carried no sign. They didn't come across the scripture. The Lord didn't say, well, we got to carry around this 12, tri 12 tribe sign. That 12 tribe sign is for us today. Spirit jumped on high priest Ariah to put that sign together. You got guys bucking up against the sign. Well, the Latin, the Latin, the Latinos and the Indians, those are not Israelites. They're heathen. But who are they if they're not, if they're not Israelites? Where did they come from? And there's, there's several documents sta stating that they spoke and wrote in, in the in the Paleo Hebrew, the Paleo. So it says, so th th based upon this first sentence, the HDU seeks to bring Hebrews out of their lands and captivity and into a land they can call their own. They aim to provide legitimacy and authority to Hebrew communities and camps. Remember, they put camps in there they put camps in there. Now, something just came to mind. In uh, Acts chapter 18, it was Claudius that uh, banished all the, he the, the Christians, mainly the Christians, but the Jews as well. The difference between a Christian and a Jew, and by the way, we call these people Christians. They're not Christians. You know what you, you, know what you start calling them? Antichrist, anti-Christians. Vocab is not a Christian. He's an anti-Christian. These so-called Christians in the church system, they are anti-Christian. So they are the anti-Christ. So we should start calling, naming them, giving them their proper name, proper label. Because the real Christians are, we are the real Christians. The Christian, um, they were called Christian. Who were called Christian first in Antioch? The apostles, the disciples, the apostles. Because it started during the time of uh, Paul and and Niger and, and Barnabas and Simeon that were called Niger. You know, that's in uh, the 13th chapter, but in but in the 11th chapter, 11 chapter X, chapter 11, it says they were called, 26th verse, they were called Christian first in Antioch. So we are the Christians, which were different from the Jews. So Claudius said, we're going to push out the Jews and the Christians, maybe them goddamn Christians. Because what were they doing? If you if you go to why did Claudius why did Claudius, Claudius uh, banish the Christians? This is, all I got to do is put that in there. Why did Claudius, Claudius banish the Christians? And, and Google, you know what it'll tell you? It'll tell you that it was they were raising hell. They were on the corners protesting, you know, sp speaking about the Messiah. You know, you got uh, this one um, historian named. Uh, I hope I pronounce his name right. Uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, help me out, y'all. Uh, Sat uh, Satius, I believe his name was. I, I haven't spoke about him in a while, but somebody helped me out. I'm all. I'm not that good. I'm getting old. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think of his name to say it the right way. But um, he spoke about the Messiah. And he, kept, he had an account of a, the Messiah. Another one is Josephus, which that was his slave name. He, he was known as Flavius Do Josephus because he was he was a slave under uh, the Vespasian because that dynasty, Vasp uh, Vespasian, Titus, and Domitian was known as the, the uh, Flavian dynasty, which Flavius Josephus he gave he gave him the name. This like sl slave owners had slaves, and it, and uh, the slave master was named Smith. Guess what? All the slaves was named Smith: Joe Smith, Bob Smith, you know, Toby Smith. They took away your name. They shall leave your name as a curse upon my my chosen. That's talking about Jake now. So it says, Hebrew uh, communities and camps, even while within their host countries, and recognize their brethren of these camps as priests of the scattered 
in a fragmented ancient temple of <laughs> Jerusalem, the relationship between the Hebrew defense unit and uh, Hebrew Israelite camps. He keeps saying camps, camps, because that's the that's the not they're not talking about these little communities of Jake. Of Jake that noted the Israelites and they keep the Sabbath and so forth and you know like the commandment keepers they wouldn't raise in no hell commandment keep keepers just got together went through the Torah and they had small hats among them because they had to learn from the small hats it says between the Hebrew defense unit and the Hebrew Israel <laughs> they made sure they put Hebrew Israelite camps as a symbolic one as the HDU requires approval of Hebrew Israelite camps. Well, we don't give you approval to to, to fight nobody. Because our our warfare is not carnal. So you got to let the spirit work. You got to let prophecies come to pass. You're upsetting prophecies. Anybody that does this, like the Zealots did and the uh the Sakari, which can't which stemmed from the Zeal from the Zealots. Their thing was to physically take down the uh, the Roman Empire, which they were going against prophecy. It says of Hebrew Israelite camps to declare to declare war. That's a that's a word that pops out. Uh, that's a, a nom de guerre. But the camps required the approval of the overall Israelite Hebrew Israelite community to maintain a vote. And matters of war, so that so they're asking for a vote. Well, you, you can't go. You can't fight. You you you'll you'll fight against them. Oh, Romans chapter thirteen. Romans chapter thirteen cuts this. Let's see. I'm not going to go to it, but it but Paul. Matter of fact, I am going to go to it. Are these guys saying we're gonna physically take this man down and we're gonna get guns, we're gonna get swords and shit. And uh let me go. And see a lot of y'all out there that claim to be Israelites, a lot of y'all are not studied. You're not in the camp, you just know you're Israelites. So any guy that comes or oh, what's this group? I forget their name. They're not they're not ready for prime time players. They're not fucking around coalition. Remember that dude came out. This was, uh, what is it, 2019, 2020? 2020, I would say. It was big. And all these jakes just followed this guy like he was a Pied Piper. They just, yeah, we get, oh, that's the brother. He was had the, the, the arms and, you know, he had the tactical gear on. He had a lot of jakes that come from different parts of the country that, were, that you know, own guns and shoot. They got with him. And then what happened? You don't hear about him no more. He had a lot of jakes flock to this guy quick, quick. And what happened? He got caught on federal charges and he's out the game. He's, I don't think he has his page up no more. And then we knew that he was, uh, he wasn't a real one because he would say Shal Shalom or Shalom, but then he would say, uh, well, no, at first he was pushing his comedic stuff. He had the comedic get up on and he was pushing this comedic stuff. Then all of a sudden, it seemed like a couple weeks later, he just became Hebrew. So we so we spoke about it. We we said, man, this I don't know who this guy is. Then come 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 to find out that he was running for president. And uh he was in the audience with uh uh this when this guy was running um Trump was running and it was said that he was part of Trump, Trump's uh, security team and all that. So it found out he was uh, pretty much an insider. So we don't know if that whole FBI arrest was set up. He, that was a that was a stage event or they actually caught him. But he's out of the picture. So the most high was not dealing with him because he was coming in a, in the way of force, physical force, like the Zealots did. Now, where did I say I was going to go? Romans. Romans 13, this is turning into a long one. Romans 13.
So if you're not in tune with Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai in the spirit, and you're not one of the elect, first of all, you got to be one of the elect. You got to be called first and then chosen. And then you then you're tuned in to Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. And when you're tuned in to Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, you're gonna do the work whether you want to do it or not. There's times where I say I ain't gonna do no videos. I'm gonna chill out. Guess what? I'll do three videos that day. Why did I do three? three videos today, that day when I said I wasn't going to do none, the spirit jumped on me. And I'll really ever say that. Oh, I'm not going to do no video today. I'm always thinking, what can I do? Sometimes I sit in front of the computer for an hour at a time, just looking for di looking at different brothers' videos and different articles and so forth and go to RT. Well, I don't go to RT like I used to, but different Alex Jones or whatever. And um. There'll, there'll be an article or somebody speak about something. I'll do a Google search on it. Then I'm I wind up making the video. So you guys that don't got your hands in your pocket, we are going to get rid of you guys. Now, if you say, well, I'm just a helper. Well, if you're just a helper, you have no business being in the camp. Get in the audience. Tell them to, oh, I'm going to get in the audience, brother. I'm, I'm not feeling the spirits. Yeah, just get in the audience, man. Be an audience member. Got to get rid of them slackers, man. If they ain't doing the work, if they ain't on fire, you know, uh, 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 Elder uh, Elder Yashuamba, the head of uh, GMS uh, Dallas, he did a video. He did, does a bunch of videos. He'll do three, four videos a day sometimes. And he had mentioned, um, what did he say? He talk, I think he was talking about the polite thing or something before that. And he was talking about how we go out on the highways and buy. Then he mentioned certain camps that used to go out that don't go out no more. He was mentioned certain guys that go back to one West. And when the YouTube came, they were all on YouTube. And then he said, he mentioned certain names. I'm not gonna mention names. You know who they are. He said, "Yeah, they used to come out. They don't come out no more, and they were good speakers." Well, the Most High is not looking for good speakers. The Most High is looking for speakers. Period. You can stutter. You you can, you know. You don't got to be the most eloquent uh, speaker out there, but just teach. See, when I speak, I just speak regular. I don't yell and I stop at the pause. You know. I don't do no acts. I, hey, look, Dan, I don't play no music in the background. I just give you the straight skinny. Like somebody asked directions and you say, okay, I'm gonna give you the direction, but let me let me put it, let me put this song on. So you listen to the song and I'm giving you directions. No, just give them the straight skinny. I know you guys like to do that. You guys like to give them a little extra. I don't give them extra, I give them the straight skinny. So the way I'm speaking now is the way I always speak. All right. I ain't no uh, MLK. You know, he that dude was a fucking actor. Fucking Malcolm X was an actor too. They were actors, man. They were demigods. They're not, they're not the ones. Even though Malcolm X did mention the Israelites being on the street corner. Somebody knows what that video is. Pass it to me. They said the true leaders are going to speak on the, on the street corner and they're going to blow the trumpet of the truth in your ear. He was prophesying. He didn't know. He didn't realize he was prophesying. Oh, y'all. Do y'all know when he got assassinated? You know who was. You know who was outside it, out there trying to get in to the meeting. High priest Ariya and his brother Shama Allah. Shama Allah. All right. And High priest Ariya, Yaikwab, Mo, the, the leadership before Yeshai and them, Lahab and them came in. They used to talk. They used to talk to uh, uh, Malcolm X all the time. They used to tell him that you were Israelite, and he was cool. He was a respectable individual, but he 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 couldn't really see it. And maybe when he said the guys are going to be on the street corner, they're going to speak speak to you. And the dry he spoke about the the uh, dry the dry bones in the valley. And he said, um, you know, like I said, if you can find a video, or oh, even um, Marcus Garvey, Marcus Garvey, I heard this one time. His son was speaking about him, and they played a like a reel to reel. It was on a um, public uh, television, and he had this. He had to. He just talked fast, but he had that thick 
accent, Caribbean accent. He says the true leaders. He says the true leaders. We'll be on the street corners. Some some to that effect. He said your true leaders will be on the street corners. Listen to these to these men. So you know he, that's how he spoke with the, with the heavy accent. You know. So the spirit was on him in a way too to say that if you're gonna make a statement like that, but he never said that that they were Israelites. Uh, Malcolm X never said that they were Israelites, but he said he said that we are the dry bones in the valley. Who are the dry bones in the valley? Valley. When you read the rest of it, was at the tenth verse, twelve verse around there. It said these are the whole house of Israel. So he said that we were, we were Israelites without saying that we were Israelites. But yeah, man, High Priest Ariah was out outside outside with his uh, with his brother, younger brother, trying to get in, and it was so crowded in there, and they heard the shots and all kind of mayhem. And then they found out that he got assassinated, man. Matter of fact, one of the uh, his security bodyguards was right next to him, and he used to be in the camp. And he's I don't know he could be that he's up in age, but he he used to be in the camp. He used to t tell me I'm Moses. He said, "Yo, Moses, your boss and I ain't Moses." He said, "Yes, you're Moses, you're Moses." <laughs> a beautiful brother. Him and his one was named Paul. I forget the other one. They were very, they were tall brothers, man. And they would rip you out the frame too. And they were humble brothers. They were they were like gentle giants. And um, he was he was right next to uh Malcolm when he got shot, you know. Um, so it says, let every, oh, going back to uh, Judge Joe Brown, he broke down, they were talking about, uh, I saw talking about Judge Joe Brown on that show, The Fallen State. Uh, he, he was speaking about, uh, Hoover, the head, the head of the, uh, is that his name? The head of the FBI, the big jughead dude, that dude was a Jake. And he went into the history that, his fa his whole family were light skinned. He showed a picture of him when he was young, and you can clearly see he was a Jake, but he was passing. There was a big thing back there. It was called passing for white. A lot of Jakes looked like Edomites, and they were passing for Edomites to get them blessings. So this was this guy, um, Hoover Hoover, and he was a mo too. He had a he had a hatred for his own people. Because he wanted to, he wanted to show the white man, see how much I hate hate my people. Because he wanted to be white. So if you watch the, the if you go to YouTube and you go to the Fallen State, and you put in, uh, I can't remember the Uncle Tom's name, um, but uh, this this guy, uh, uh, Judge, Judge Judge Joe Brown captivated him. Man, he was like, oh, I didn't know that. He said, amazing. He always said, amazing. I didn't know that. Yeah, Ju Judge Joe Brown was getting down. Judge Joe Brown was getting down. You know, he's a real one, man. He probably a Reubenite. He probably a Reubenite because he said he got Gad and Reuben all in his family. So he probably a Reubenite. I said, let every soul be subject unto the, unto the higher powers. Forgive me for ranting. Uh, for there is no power but, but of the most high. The powers that be ordained of the of the of the father of the of the heavenly father so who's the power that be the roman empire the greatest largest uh, empire at that time was the roman empire egypt came into power because egypt came into power because the most high set them up in power and the most high Gave the vision to uh, Ab Abram or Abraham. It says, now listen at this second verse, and you got a lot of people that break this thing down wrong. And you're going to have a lot of people use this scripture, if I'm not mistaken. But I'm positive they are. When they when they set up them chipping stations, you have a lot of these churches. Oh, well, when you had the the J's, you had the, the you had the different churches. Have people giving you the J, the JJ, you know, in the church. So they go to church and they get the JJ shot and then they go, go on about their business. So I see the same thing happening with the, uh, you know, the, the C hip. They'll have stations in front of the churches, they'll have stations in the church, 
Because of course they're gonna pay these passes off. They're all inside agents any damn way. It said, whosoever therefore resists the power, resists the ordinance of the Most High, and they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. So this is how they interpret it. Whosoever therefore resists the power, uh, resists the ordinance of the Most High. So they'll say, if you if the if this man comes up with something and tells you you got to do this and there's a law, if you don't do it, you're really going against the Most High. Let me read that again. Whosoever therefore resisteth the power, resisteth the ordinance of the Most High, and they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. Meaning, if, if this man comes up with a law and you don't follow it, the Most High is going to destroy you. That don't mean that. For rulers are not a terror unto good works, but unto the evil. Let me, let me look up the word resist this. And I may, it means to uh, fight against them, set up uh, like the Zillots. The Zillots and the Sakari, that's what they were doing. They were saying, we're going to physically take this Roman Empire down. Let me look up the word resist. Then I may go to uh, let you listen to it. Strong's G, 498. Antetasso. Antetasso. Antitasmo. To range in battle against. To oppose oneself, resist. So Paul was saying, don't take up arms to try to take this man down because the Most High set this man up for us to be punished. Now let me see something. Let me come back over here. Because it says, for rulers, which are the Romans, are not a terror to good works. Us going out there on the highways and the byways, that's that's a good word. And it's called a work. Leaning against the wall, being a wallflower with your hands in the pocket, that's not a work. But, the, but to the evil, will thou then not be afraid of the power, the, the existing powers, this man's power today? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise in the same. For he is a minister of the Most High to thee for good, but if thou do that which is evil, be afraid, for he beareth not the sword in vain. So his, he's got the power. For he is the minister of the Most High, a revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. And all these jakes that be getting shot up, the Most High puts a spirit on these cops to do it. There was one cop, he shot this one guy. So the guy, so the guy said, why you shoot me? Because he said, get your registration. He turned his back to get in the cop. The eat of my cop just shot him up. So he said, why you shoot me? He said, I don't know why. Yeah, of course not, because the Most High put the spirit on him to do what he had to do. That was a punishment on that Jake. And that, at the same time, that was to stare Jake up. Okay, so now let's do this. Let's see what the, uh, this is come, becoming a long one. Let's see what the commentary says. Let me reload that. You see how many prophecies that came to pass in this year. We're not even at the end. We got another four months for the end of the year. Then when uh, 2024 comes, most are going to turn it up. That's probably going to be the year that the, I'm almost positive. But we'll see. That's when they're going to introduce the karagma. Karag they're going to do away with the paper dollar. Everything going to be digital. And we were right. You're going to say, everybody going to say the same. Oh, shit. GMS was right. So let's see what we can get out of this. Let me see what it says. All right, Cambridge. Let's go to Cambridge. 
the passage does not touch on the question of forms of government, which is the Roman government. The powers that be is a phrase which on the whole accepts authority de facto of the fact, irrespective of its theory or of its circumstances of origin, just so both hum human and divine law after no long lapse of time recognize uh, proper uh, property de facto irrespective of circumstances. See, they give me these, these fucking words. Meaning domination in the common sense of the word for rulers and our territory, the good works. Uh, it means don't come against the, the existing government because the most high set up this existing government or rulership to fulfill prophecy. Whatsoever therefore resists, whosoever therefore resists the power, resists the ordinance of the most high. These words are either an argument to enforce the subjection and join in the former part of the foregoing verse, you may not resist, meaning fight. Therefore, you must be subject or else they are in an inference from the, from the latter part of it. Seeing the civil power is of, of the most high and of his ordinances, laws that's why you can't you can't kill a you can't you know uh, any of these israelite groups they can't kill a man and a woman because of the act of adultery you can't go out and kill moles you know you can't do these things and when they went to uh kill the lord they had to go before the governor they had to go to, before pontius Pilate, right um it was paul that spoke to felix and agrippa and he wanted to go all the way. He wanted to go all the way to the top. He wanted to go talk to uh, Donald J. Trump, <laughs> Nero. It says uh, because because what he was, you know, the Apostle Paul knew the laws. It must not be uh, resisted or opposed. You can't bring armies against this society because the Most High set this man up to resist authority. To what? There it goes. To resist authority is to wage war against the Most High himself. There you go. To resist authority is to wage war against the Most High because you're up. You're trying to upset the most, undermine the Most High's prophecies. Only he will that now let it will let until he be taken out of the way. So anyway, let me. So like I said, they're going when they when they're gonna push that chip, when these people, these Israelite groups push that that sold out or whatever, don't know, they're gonna say, well, look, the Romans chapter 13 and 2 says you gotta you you gotta take it. They said, take it, you gotta take it, man. And there's guys in Israel that said, go ahead and take it. Go ahead and take it. General Yohanna was one of them. So it says, um, okay, Matthews 26. Verse 51 and 52. It says, And behold, one of them which uh which were which one of them which were with uh Yahweh, which is Peter. If you go to John, I'll tell you mention Peter, stretch out his hand and drew his sword and and struck a servant of the high priest uh and smote off his ear, which shows you that this that Peter was positioned positioned with the sword, man. He was an expert with the sword. He, he swiped his, he chopped his, he cut his arrow off clean. So he was a warrior, you know? And back then, the Romans allowed you to carry arms. In this society, you can't carry arms, you know? Because of the fear of you coming against the government. And the high priest was Mal Malcolm, Mal Malchus. So it says in the 52nd verse, then said Yahweh unto him, put up 
again thy sword into thy place into the sheath for for all they that take up take the sword shall perish with the sword is not Esau going to perish with the sword why because he took up the sword so his blessing is going to become a curse give you one more then I close I went long uh, 2 Corinthians 10 verse should start, should, should, I should start from the first verse third verse for though we walk in the flesh we do not war after the flesh for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal guns and knives, but mighty through the most high to the pulling down of strongholds with lies. Like I, if you go back when I was a kid, Jake's just knew in the 60s that Jesus was white. How many Jake's you know, there's churches that's not even with that Jesus white stuff. Even the white, so-called white man, you know they do they do history channel they did one history channel or discovery channel or whatever where they said let's search jesus and what did he look like and the conclusion was he looked like a black man with a fro these were these are so-called white people it's a casting down imagination what's in your imagination is something in your mind junior said free your mind and your ass will follow that's from the movie platoon it's simple. Free your mind. Because the black man ain't come. However he said it. He said, I don't eat no pork. Pork again. He said, it's simple. Free your mind and your ass will follow. So guess what? Our minds are being free and our asses is going to follow. You, you, your mind, it's, everything begins in the mind. And then from the mind, you take action. And every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of the Most High, which Esau does, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of the of the Messiah, and having in in a readiness to avenge all disobedience when your o obedience is fulfilled. Do ye look on things after the outward appearance? Well, that's what IUIC does. If any man trust to himself that he is of the Messiah, let him of himself think this again, that as he is the Messiah's, even so are we the Messiah's. For though I should boast somewhat more of our authority, because there's, there's leadership positions, which the Lord, uh, now, now that word there should be kairish, which means uh, superior, have given us for edification, because it's all about edification. The word edification is where you get the word edif edifice, to uh, build something. When you have a good conversation, you say it was a good build. Well, what are you building? What bricks are you using? You're using the bricks of information. And not for your destruction, I should not be ashamed that I may not seem as if I would uh, terrify you by letter. For his letters say they are weighty and powerful, but his bodily presence is weak and his speech contemptible. So what is this saying? That Paul wasn't no great orator. And he wasn't, hey, there's a lot of big, bro hey, brother, we do the closing, man. I'll be looking at these brothers. I said, damn, these brothers are all fucking big dudes, man. Hey, brothers six foot four, six foot five, six foot two. You know? Hey, but we, you know, we, we look like the insignificant guys, man. M myself, Apostle Gabar, and uh, Apostle Ram Lob, and uh, Ricard, Apostle Ricard, and you know, we like we're like regular guys, you know. But um, anyway, anyway, I'm gonna say Shalom. Forgive me for going long, but there's lessons within lessons. With that, I'm gonna say Shalom.